I, you know, I've done, I've done all of Brighton. Hello there, you loose units, and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Reviews. I'm, of course, your host, Andrew Isles. Hope you've been looking after yourselves, looking after each other, pulling your heads in and all that jazz. Here we are again for another episode. Yes, it is a comic book film, as you uh, have seen in the description and the title of this film. So let's get straight into it. Today's review is about none other than The Suicide Squad. A very saucy, nasty woman who works for the government sends a team of ratbag comic book criminals to blow up a building. Armed with high-tech weapons, they trek through the dangerous jungle on a search-and-destroy mission. Will they succeed? Will they try and escape? Why is there a hot crazy chick with a spear? Don't ask questions. Let's just have some gory fun with... The Suicide Squad. Yes, and that is a synopsis and rundown for The Suicide Squad. It is, of course, directed by uh, everyone's favourite Twitter personality, James Gunn. After Marvel fired uh, uh, good old James Gunners, Warner Brothers DC were like, shit, we need a bloody hit up our sleeves. So let's get the guy who made uh, a talking tree and a raccoon awesome characters. And, uh, and he did. And here we are with Warner Brothers DC, The Suicide Squad. Now, Marvel realising that they may have shit the bed and jumped the gun, pun intended, by getting rid of old Gunners, they've hired him yet again for the third instalment of directing Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And honestly, in my opinion, I think it's probably the only Marvel film to get excited about in the near future. We have a whole new band of characters here for this pseudo-reboot sequel. We have Deadshot 2.0 Bloodsport. That's right, he's played here captivatingly by the one and only Idris Elba. Idris is pseudo the, the lead of this film. Uh, it is an ensemble cast and they use that quite well here, but he's kind of uh, the lead in this movie and, uh, and he's one bad mother flapper, I have to say. I say dead shot 2.0, giving him shit and all that sort of stuff, but honestly, I think this character of Bloodsport is way better and I think it comes down to uh, Idris Elba's uh, interpretation of this character. He's so good. Nothing against Will Smith. Love the guy. I think he's a great personality slash actor slash movie star. Uh, but I really love the character of Bloodsport here, and again, it's, it comes down to the actor playing him. Uh, he's phenomenal. It's also good to see uh, Idris Elba being a pseudo-lead in a big blockbuster like this film. Finally. And his chemistry with John Cena is off the charts. Speaking of which, yes, playing Peacemaker here, we have none other than... John Cena! John Cena's comic timing is impeccable. He's so good. Uh, he knows his strengths. He knows who he is as an individual slash performer slash actor slash entertainer. Uh, and he's popped up in a few films now uh, in recent history. And he's really, really funny in pretty much all of them. He's great. Uh, I said a while back, though, he would have been perfectly cast, I think, as the character of Shazam. And could you imagine his showdown with Black Adam in the upcoming film? We have another character here by the name of Ratcatcher 2, who is kind of a modern-day uh, Pied Piper and is the absolute heart of this team. Uh, she has a heartfelt backstory, uh, semi-tragic of course, and uh, she's actually the glue that keeps this whole team together. This actress and this character is phenomenal. It's nice to see a character with so much compassion uh, in an ensemble cast like this and, um, and the themes of this movie. And, uh, and her main rat, uh, who stays by her side, is so goddamn cute. Now the character we have is King Shark here, voiced by the uh, elderly uh, steroid pincushion Sylvester Stallone. That's right, the one and only, and he is easily the comic relief in this film. Um, Gunn knows how to to show the soul of odd, weird sort of animal characters, I suppose, like a talking tree or a raccoon, for instance. And uh, and here he uses it obviously with a great white shark character, and he's both super cute. And hilarious. Uh, in my opinion, he pretty much stole the show. We have Polka Dot Man, uh, who is obviously an obscure character who's just in the DC uh, DC vault from way back when. Don't know when it this character was invented or when it came about, but my god, what a character. Uh, again, it's showing Gunn's uh, ability to make anything amazing and heartfelt. Uh, this character is easily the most tragic uh, of the on, on the ensemble team, and he uh, has a very compelling, tragic backstory. Uh, he was perfectly cast. I've seen his actor pop on a few things, and he's uh, he's obviously on the rise, and he's got a bit of a starring role here. And also, the character was played childlike as well, tragically so. He was the perfect balance of funny and, and tragic. 
And of course, two returning characters here. We have Rick Flagg and the bankable merchandise uh, character known as Harley Quinn. This film honestly made me really care about Rick Flagg. In the previous film, he was just kind of there as the, I guess, the pseudo leader of the team. But here he really shines and his chemistry is off the charts with the other characters. He's a really good character and Joel Kinnaman absolutely killed it. I wanted to see more of him and this character. He is so good in this movie. However, I do have to admit, though, that I'm getting a little bit tired of the character of Harley Quinn. I'm pretty much over it, I'll be honest with you. Now, look, I love Margot Robbie, okay? She's a great actor. But this character is starting to really grind my gears and annoy the shit out of me. It's the crazy, weird antics. It's the New York accent. And whenever the movie focused on her, I kind of tuned out because I'm sort of over this character. In saying that, though, this little side story that she had was probably the best that this character has ever had on screen, but I'm kind of over the character. This is her third appearance now, Harley Quinn, in a live action film. And, uh, and it, where, where do you take the character? There's nowhere really you can take it. It's not necessarily one note, but it's the Harley Quinn note. It's just the way, it, it's never gonna go, grow or go anywhere, I think. I mean, Harley Quinn, as most of us know, was created for the animated a TV Batman show uh, back in the day, just so the Joker could walk all over her and uh, and try to kill her uh, many, many times in many, many, many episodes. But uh, now she's like a, a leading character, and if Birds of Prey is anything to go by, she's become sort of a feminist icon. There's, as I said, there's really no way you can take this role anymore, in my opinion. But of course, uh, she's a bankable character that cosplayers love to make famous because she, I guess she's the perfect balance of nerdy and sexy. Viola Davis is back, that's right, leading the team, and she was born to play this role. Uh, showing even though that she's, uh, we've got a team of mercenaries or, or, or killers, if you will, and bad guys, she is easily the most evil one out of them all. Um, and just, you know, pulling the strings behind the scenes. So, you know, the American government. The film is not necessarily a sequel, it kind of is, it's kind of a reboot, it's kind of all the above. Uh, a few characters from the previous film uh, recognize each other and have a bit of a, a repertoire, if you will. So obviously their first film does exist in this universe, but there's no other mention later on as the film goes on of that two hour trailer that was released in 2016. And the mission here is way more streamlined. It's straight down the line. It's very Commando-esque, okay? It's, uh, they go to, uh, the team gets dropped into Corta Maltese. The skulls, the bodies, you give it all such a glow, I don't know if it's art. They're dropped in there, into the jungle, and go on a sort of a commando-esque mission to uh, blow up a building and get out. That's it. The film obviously has very dark humour. Um, it was pure James Gunn, let off the Marvel leash, okay? If you like gory, comedic action, like laughing at things that you probably shouldn't have, but hell, it's funny and gory, like movies like Super uh, or The Hunt, then you will love this. Of course, we have a climactic... Uh, epic third act battle here uh, where the kind of like the brain slugs from Futurama rock up It seemed like a little over the top, but in doing a little bit of research Apparently it's straight out of the comic books from the 80s and well done to that again James Gunn can make any sort of creature or weird thing uh, Amazing and of course the team work together to sort of win the day if you will and you're rooting absolutely for them because uh, They've earned their stripes if you will. Uh, I love them as a team. They worked really well together The chemistry was off the chart it was such a good time. There's also some legit stakes in this movie as well, like characters actually die, and they're never coming back. <laughs> they're fucking dead, which was awesome. I, I, I won't say who, you know, bites the bullet, uh, but there's some legit moments where characters go, you're like, oh, really? Them? Damn. Is it good? Yes, resoundingly so. It's a solid action film. Uh, all the DC films, uh, bar the, the Snyder ones, or the Snyder directed ones, all seem like they're, they're on their own. They're not really technically in the same universe, and that's probably the way it should be. You know, they should do something different from Marvel. Uh, it's DC. It's completely different. And, uh, you know, they should let the directors off the leash and let them do what you hired them to do. You, you hired them for their vision, let them do it. And this film is a perfect example. It is pure James Gunn. If Warner Brothers DC want to focus on movies and characters that are obscure or deep within their vaults that not many people know uh, that they, you know, who they are or how they exist, like instead of making a Batman movie every six months, I'm fucking all for it. Please go deep 
in a deep dive in those vaults of yours because if Polka Dot Man and Rat Catcher 2 have anything to go by, I want more of that stuff. I think this film is perfect timing as well. It's kind of the anti comic book film in a way, you know. We're all living in a superhero fatigue, you know. Uh, Marvel's the biggest culprit here, but even TV shows and stuff. And uh, we're living in a populated world of the notion that being a good guy uh, uh, is boring and old fashioned and out of touch. But being a narcissistic arsehole who has moral ambiguity, that's really in cool and hip with the kids. And as I said, it's like an anti uh, superhero movie, you know. The movies are always praised like that, the R rated anti-hero movies like Deadpool or Kick-Ass, you know, I think we want that, we're ready for that, and again, aforementioned with these more obscure characters, you know, we don't need another Spider-Man, we don't need another friggin' Batman film, give us more of these weird characters. I'm gonna give this film a resounding two thumbs up, it was so, so good, it's not without flaws, no film is, but uh, it was so good, there was no politics being shoved down your throat, uh, it's just straight up action escapism goodness. It's dark, it's funny, it's gory, it's hilarious, uh, good characters, uh, and it's 80s style action at its finest. And I really dug the score as well, not just the, the, the actual songs that are inserted in the film, but there's actually some of the score that's actually a bit heartfelt at times. Two thumbs up, love this film. Guys, that's my review of The Suicide Squad. Write down below what is your favourite uh, comic book adaptation or what ones you want to see in the near future. Uh, yeah, and that's it. That is The Suicide Squad. Of course, give this episode a like if you could. Your love and support is very much welcome. And of course, hit that subscribe button because we give it episodes weekly. And uh, yeah, join us for more spicy content. And as always, stay spooky, kids. Mm -hmm.